Welcome to Ignited Research. With this Ignite inspired video series, we aim to build stronger connections between learning science and instructional practice. In this installment, we talk to educator Nelly Lopez about the power of grouping students who are at different levels on an academic skill. Students benefit from working on a skill or learning target in small groups with others who are at different ability levels in that skill, likely through developing a growth mindset around the target skill and gaining a better understanding of their own strengths. Nelly Lopez, learning facilitator at Lindsay Unified School District in Lindsay, California, noticed changes in her learner's growth when she began to create small groups based on characteristics other than specific skill ability levels. Nelly, how would you describe your process for grouping and how do you think it improves learning experiences? It's a beautiful chaos <laughs> because we take into consideration everything that they're bringing and how can I mold three different learners and put them together to help each other. And my organizer, my you know, note taker, all of that all shared it. I wish I would have had that as a learner. And I still use those abilities and learn from my own peers when I bring it into the lesson plans. Sometimes just working through that frustration builds a lot more knowledge. They get to always reflect. So is there anything else that you were struck by? The culture that it brings into the setting. Oh my gosh, I I get chills because they are a family. And so I, I had always grouped according to academic. Right. Once we started, it was just that, building the culture, you know, getting them to really enjoy each other's company and knowledge and be able to freely speak without being, you know, shamed or embarrassed. It's, it's amazing. Working in small groups has been shown to lead to better learning outcomes. Being grouped with peers that are more or less advanced in an academic skill helps students build growth mindsets around learning, as well as higher self-efficacy in their more developed academic and non-academic skills. In addition, grouping in this way can be data-driven, and instruction in these groups can be differentiated. Ability grouping, according to Joe Bowler, is an area of education where the practice that happens in schools is far from the research evidence that exists. International analysts conclude that the most successful countries are those that group by ability the latest and the least. When considering instructional approaches like small group or individualized instruction or mastery-based progression, it's important not to isolate students, nor only to use same ability groups. Students should have opportunities to learn in a variety of settings, including mixed ability groups. Teachers can use technology to keep track of groups, to communicate to students which groups they are in for a given learning activity, and to move students or create new groups when appropriate. Students can use technology as a tool for engaging in collaborative work and taking on different roles within a group to use the skills they are stronger in to help others develop those skills. For example, one student may take notes from a group discussion digitally. Another may use a timer to keep the group moving along while another might do research to answer questions while the group is engaged in completing an assignment or activity to demonstrate mastery of the learning target. Technology can facilitate mixed ability grouping by capturing data about academic and other skills related to a learning target that can be used to create and recreate groups, like organizational or leadership skills, or even roles a student has taken on in previous groups. Thanks for watching and look out for additional Ignited Research videos coming soon. You can find more free resources like this one at the Learning Accelerator.